to the latest demonstration of the Spotlight Virtual Tribunals work. Um, this last sprint was uh, kind of a, an extended sprint while we were, uh, the team was away at a local conference here at Stanford. Um, so we've extended it to two weeks. Um, most of the work that I'll be demoing here today was done uh, the week before last. Um, and we've been finishing it up uh, at the beginning of those this week before we transition into our uh, next sprint. Um, just as a kind of a quick reminder, the stuff that I'm demonstrating today is around internationalization primarily. Um, for this particular exhibit, uh, you'll see that I've added two, um, two languages uh, available for this exhibit. Um, the last demonstration that we had, um, we had support for general kind of basic settings, um, as you can see here, and the browse categories. Um, in the, this last sprint, we've also added support for metadata field labels and search field labels. Um, I'll go ahead and pop into those just to kind of show um, what we mean. So uh, metadata field labels, these are uh, what's going to show up in search results and on the record view um, for the label that's to the left of the piece of, uh, the piece of metadata. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and show kind of one thing I'm going to add, uh, a, a translation for Portuguese into um, personal names. Um, one of the things that you will also notice is that we've added um, a kind of a, a progress indicator up in the tab here. Um, you'll, in the general tab, it says that we had completed three of seven, and uh, in the metadata field labels, it lets us know here that we uh, have not completed any because it says zero of uh, 17. Um, so now when I click Save Changes, um, you're going to see a couple of things that were different from the last time we demonstrated. Um, one is you, you are seeing that uh, the progress was uh, updated. Now it says 1 of 17. Uh, also, after I saved, I was brought back to the tab uh, that I originated the change on. Um, before, this was just kind of always going to the very first tab. Um, and so now we've had added the ability to um, be redirected back to the active tab that you were on, which will make it really nice for people who are um, maybe making edits and then, and then saving and then editing again. Um, so uh, similarly, as I mentioned, uh, we also added support for, for search field labels. Um, this is a bit different in that what we're talking about here uh, is things like the drop down that's to the left of the search box for uh, fielded search. Um, as well as the facet labels themselves uh, and the sort fields. So um, again, when you're in a search itself, we have the ability uh, to sort. And uh, in that sort, we have like say sort by relevance, uh, title type. So you have uh, full control to uh, translate these into uh, the language of your choice as well as the things in the dropdown. Um, as you can see here, if I switch over into uh, Portuguese, um, my, our search now, uh, drop down has now been translated, uh, and if I were to pop into, uh, into a search here and go to a record, um, you will see that the uh, personal names metadata field uh, that I updated is now getting my translation as opposed to the, uh, the English translation. Um, that's about all we have uh, today to demonstrate. Um, thanks, and look forward to more updates in the near future. Uh, this is going to be a quick demo of the, um, the mock-ups, the design mock-ups for translating pages. Um, pages in Spotlight are the home page, pages, and about pages, um, which are all constructed in a similar way. Um, this is the latest design. It's an update of the previous design. And uh, what we're looking at now is there will be a new tab in the uh, administration section of the exhibit, a new tab called Pages. And um, this is a little different from the other tabs uh, where the translations are actually made in the tabs. Um, here, the Pages tab, uh, because Pages are a lot more complex, uh, the Pages tab is going to serve as a dashboard um, to help the curator, translator, uh, understand what pages they have uh, available to translate and uh, to do some, um, make some choices in when they want to start translations and if they want to redo a translation for a given page. 
So this mockup is showing um, the pages dashboard um, in sort of a mid -tran mid translation where this with it, uh, the the curator here is in Italian mode for the translations. Um, they have uh, a dozen uh, pages in their exhibit in English. And uh, so that's listed in the first column. And um, the, the next column, the published uh, column, shows whether or not they've, those pages um, are currently published in English. So that's just sort of a status um, information for the translator to know what's going on with the English pages. Then the third column is the language-specific um, version of the page in the first column. So uh, in this case, we're in Italian. So this column is showing um, the titles of the Italian versions of each of the English pages. Um, and the next column, the published column here, is uh, where the curator can uh, choose to publish or unpublish a Italian version of the page. Um, and then the last column is for some actions that can be um, done on the page. And um, I'm going to switch to another uh, version of this mock-up uh, just to explain how the, the process will work for pages, because again, it's a little different from the other translation uh, fields that are available in other tabs. So um, for pages, uh, the way we've we've decided uh, translations might best work for pages is um, pages are uh, translated pages are basically going to be based on the, the default or English version of the page, but once a translated version of the page has been created in the language, that page exists independently of the source um, English page. Um, this means that, for example, um, uh, the curator can create an Italian version of a feature page and uh, make changes to it in terms of uh, eliminating uh, certain widgets, um, adding more text than exists in the English uh, version of the page for a given widget, creating uh, new widgets that exist only in the Italian version, rearranging widgets so they're different from the English version. Um, so this, this allows a lot of flexibility, um, but it also um, sort of creates a, an issue where we want to allow the curator to choose when to um, create the default version of the, in this case, Italian version of a page. So what we're looking at here is what you would see um, when we go into Italian mode and we haven't, we haven't done any translations of pages yet. So the default uh, state of pages is um, there are um, no translated versions that exist in the, tra the, the Italian language, um, in this case, except for the home page. This is because there's always a home page in the exhibit and it's always published. Um, so we have to have a translated version available um, in case the, the locale is public and the user switches to that locale, in this case Italian, we need to be able to show a home page. So um, the home pages will be created, um, the, the translated version of the home page will be created by default and will be published by default. All the other pages though, um, we're leaving it up to the curator to choose when they want to start that translation. Um, and the idea here is that the translated version of the English page um, is going to start off as a copy of the English page. The translator would then edit that page in the Italian locale and um, make the translations in all the various uh, widgets that exist on the page. So we want to um, allow the, the translator to uh, wait as long as possible until ideally the English uh, version of the page is as complete as possible um, so that they're starting with a full um, comparable version of the English page in their, in their translated version. Um, so that's why there is this no translated page message and uh, a link that will allow them to create the, the translated version to start with. So, so you see here they have all this, these links and then we go back here and we can 
see these are examples of where um, they've created a page and have uh, started some of the translations. So here there's a translated title, um, and presumably that page has had a bunch of translations in the, wi the, the widgets, and they've chosen the, the page. Um, just a couple of uh, notes and some details here. Um, there is the issue of maybe they've they created a translated version of the page, but then made lots of changes to the English version of the page, um, and they want to start over because they want the the translated version to more closely match the uh, English version of the page. So that's what this recreate action will be. It will basically just delete the the translated version make a new copy of the English version that the curator can then start to uh, work on um, uh, translations for. Uh, we also have a delete action uh, to delete a, a page, which will put it back into this state here, like the curated essays uh, row here, where it's just waiting for the curator to choose when they want to start a translation. And then finally, I think the last uh, I want to make about this is there is this issue of how once a page has been created in the translated language, how do we keep the uh, curator and translators updated as to when the English version of that same page may have had edits made that make it more recently updated than the translated page. So this could be important if the translator was assigned to translate a page um, and then later on, the curator made some changes to the English version of that page, and we want to make sure that the translator kind of knows that change was made. A change was made on the English version of the page in case that needs to be, you know, coordinated with the translation. So, um, whenever the English version of a page has been updated more recently than the Italian version of that page, like in this first row here, the collections page. Um, the plan is to show a little warning signal, uh, a warning icon um, next to the Italian version of the page, and then the timestamp under the English version, just to uh, make it, you know, clear to the the curator that you know why we're bringing this to their attention. Um, this doesn't always mean it's a problem necessarily. It could just been in the English version there could have been just a, a typo that was fixed or some insignificant change that's irrelevant to the translation. Um, but we want to at least alert them to the possibility that they might want to uh, double check the, the English to see if anything needs to be coordinated in the translated page. Um, yeah, and so that the same thing works for all the feature pages and adopt pages. Um, and um, that is basically the plan for um, the design of the uh, pages translations. Thank you.